Hey everybody, it's your boy Serge Dragon and welcome back to another edition of the Heavens Monsters Podcast. With me today is Andre Mitchell, Chris Petrie, Mike Henry. If you're ready for an episode of the Heavens Monsters Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. I said if you're ready for an episode of the Heavens Monsters Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's kick off. Let's kick off with MJF and Chris Jericho, the losers from All Out. Yep, they try to congratulate each other and say how wrong it was that they lost their match. And then when they turn around, they go, what a loser. It's like they were made cut from the same cloth. Yeah. So with that said, let's go ahead and start the uh, night with the first match. That's Jungle Boy versus with the Lucha Express. Source. Lucha Source, yeah, and Lucha Express versus Lucha Bros. Penta but, L Zero M versus Somebody, M hold up. This this source is saying Lucha Express and oh, Lucha oh, Express. It's, okay. It, it's supposed to say the Lucha Brothers versus Jurassic Express. Yeah, let me try uh there you go. I was using a different source. Let me try this one. There you go. That's what I'm used to when it comes to Lucha Underground. Yeah. Lucha Bros and Pe uh, Penta L L Zero M. What the hell? Who put that there? Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. Yep. It's supposed to be... Is it supposed to be a six-man tag? Or is it an eight-man tag, or is it just a tag team match? It, it, it was it was a tag. It was Lucha Brothers with with Eddie Kingston, the Butcher and Blade versus Jungle Boy and Lucha Source. Ah, so it was a regular tag team match. Let me see who. Won. The winner was the J Jungle Express and Jurassic Express and Luchasaurus. Yeah, and they were starting to get mad at each other. The Lucha Brothers, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. were getting pissed at each other and blaming each other. Eddie Kingston had to stop the feud saying they were family. Telling everybody, come hug, come hug. Yeah, look at the camera and said he would never eliminate. He was never eliminated from the Casino Battle Royale. At all out. He was never eliminated. Look up the rules. What are your thoughts on that, Mikey? Like he's, well, like you said, Eddie Kingston was never eliminated. He was never eliminated. But, but like I said, Eddie Kingston was never, never, never eliminated from this past Saturday's Casino Battle Royal at All Out. And to look up the rules before we got the camera and walked away. That means when he fell out of the ring, he hadn't, go he hadn't gone over the top rope, he'd gone through the middle. Damn. I might have to go back on that and see. I'm actually curious. What about you, Chris? I'm surprised of Phoenix and and uh, Pentagon Junior like Lucha Underground with me with that battery. We're almost about to see it. <laughs> and you, Andre? All right, so far. All right, next thing on the list is Jake the Snake Roberts and Murder Hawk. Lance Archer were and Alley in the, in an alley in the ring. Oh my god. Go ahead, Mikey, take it. It says that Moss is rough. Jake says Mossley was going to piss himself when Archer gets a hold of him, but Archer says he was going to be the AW World Champion and there's not a damn thing anybody could do about it because in the end Everybody dies. What the bleep is he talking about? 
Everybody dies. Everybody what dies. What the bleep? What the bleep is Jay talking about? Well, he's gonna piss himself. Oh, oh my God! My thoughts is, mostly. I hope Mosley's watching because Murhart Lance Archer is trying to prove that he is next in line for the AEW World Champion. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, he's trying to do that. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that, Andre? She good, I guess, so far. You, Chris? Lance Archer and John Mosley. Yeah, just, uh, Lance Archer trying to, uh, secure his destiny. Tell me AEW world champion, because like I said, they were renewed their rivalry back in, back in Japan, so they fought for the United States title in Japan. Mm. So, they were their rivalry in AEW at this time before the AEW championship. So Lance Archer and John Moxley have history in New Japan wrestling. That's... Mm. This ain't their first tango. It's just the first time within AEW. Mm. We got some sad news, boys. After his victory against Sammy Guevara, Matt Hardy makes a special announcement saying that he needs time to recuperate. So that once he's fully healed, he'll come back and be better than ever. What do you think about that? So he's just taking a break. Uh huh. Your thoughts, Mikey? I probably. Oh wait, wait, wait. Go ahead, uh, Andre. Go ahead. Go ahead, Andre. Go on. Oh, he probably you know break. I guess so. It's good for him, I guess. You know. He's due for one. Okay, back to you, Mikey. I don't blame Matt Hardy for taking time off because it was an emotional match between him and Inner Circle's Sammy Guevara. And Matt Hardy just said, it's time for me, it's time for him to get back to being healthy. And when he comes back, he's going after his first AEW championship and the first one on the list, the TNT title, according to Tony Schiavone. Mm. Also want to point out that his wife, the queen, Rebecca, as well as his third born child was in the audience wearing masks. T. Maxwell. Or Mas- the other two were at home watching TV, even though it was late at night. <laughs> you, Chris? Yeah, I, uh, I agree with Mike. Uh, I have no comment. You have no comment? No. All right, then. Moving on. You want this, Mikey? Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy versus Hybrid 2's Angelico with Jack Evans. Who won that match? Oh, Orange Cassidy with the Orange Punch. He turned the lights on out Angelico after the Orange Punch. Anything else that happened after that match? Oh, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho awakens something inside Orange Cassidy. He is more intense and furious than we have seen according to Excalibur. Woo. But then th- but then things got out of hand. Chris Jericho's other members of Inner Circle, Santana Tears, would jump Cassie from behind, assaulted him with a mad ball, loaded sock, and coming to his aid, best friends, Trent and Tuck Shaler. Mm. And your thoughts and on that? Just, oh. and, and not only that, best friends storm to the ring to help their buddy Orange Cassie and run off the ceilings. Best friend says next week they're going to meet Santana and Ortiz in the parking lot. My two cents on that is knowing that Orange Cassidy still got a good momentum, and even with the pride and power of jumping him, that most of yeah, yeah, that uh, most of match against Jericho, that Amy Gallon take your pick. Mimosa mayhem match. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I mean Amy Gallon's unbelievable. Yep. 
Now we got a street fight between the best friends and Pride and Powerful. This is going to be good. We'll cover that tomorrow. And uh, your thoughts on that, Andre? Good so far. You, Chris? The world of best friends and yeah, we're going to enjoy that. Next up, the Young Bucks were having a knock on their door with, uh, I guess, a uh, What's his name? Alice Marvez. Alice Marvez was trying to get a response from them after the breakup of the Elite this past Saturday. The door finally opened and the bus super kicked Marvez. <laughs> they didn't want no comment. And you know they got I fined guess. for that. They got fined for that. $5,000. Five grand. You want to skip that one, boys, or you want to move up? Uh, mention, uh, get your two cents on it. My my two cents is what the what the bleep is up with the young bucks? I mean, why would they super Kate Marvez? That's what I'm asking. They don't want to talk. Uh, 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 uh. Not after what happened with uh, Kenny. Omega. Yeah, when Kenny Omega and Hangman Page is all elite is breaking down. You, Chris? Uh, mm, I agree, they're frustrated. Yeah. Alright, next we have Super Bad, Keep Sabin, and Penelope Ford revealing their best man. We would have a couple of guys from his uh, Twitch following. And we had a guy he was friends with getting confused as to being called best man. But then they finally reveal him. And it's none other than Miro, better known the beast for, as Rusev the Beast from Bulgaria. Miro, gosh. And Ed, said that 10 years in the same house and you can take that brass ring and shove it up your ass. That was a message. My name is Miro. Yeah, my name is Miro, and I'm all elite. That was a message to WWE. He was in WWE for 10 years. He mad. So now he's getting... He want- Go ahead. Well, my two cents is Miro wants to send a message to... Send a message to Vince McMahon and WWE. Because remember, everybody from WWE is leaving... And going to AEW, because we all know that AEW is winning. They're winning on Wednesdays. They are, they got more wins than WWE. Not going to lie. That or Impact. Some like that. Some. Your thoughts, Chris? Man, I keep, keep there, so whenever, I wonder when he's going to wrestle. Yeah, when is his wrestling debut? Miro, Beast of Belfast. Not Belfast. Bulgaria. I got confused with Kimlin Dane. How do you feel about Rusev now changing his name to Miro and appearing? On AEW, Andre. I hope to see him do good in uh, AEW. I mean, I would like to see him still with the WWE and Rona, but I guess he was let go. But I, yeah, but I hope to see him do a good job in AEW and get a chance. You know. I hear you. You want to take the next one, Mikey? Adam Heyman Pettis was interviewed early day by Tony Schiavone. Yeah, he don't know how to feel. He just knows that he messed up bad. And now he needs to move forward in hoping to recuperate his friendship and his career. 
whether it's tag teams or singles. He does not know yet. Uh, my thoughts is I don't know what that bleep happened to Adam Page. I, 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 I mean, he got very candid with, T- with Tony Schiavone. Mm. Uh, I don't know what is next for Adam Heyman Page. Mm-mm-mm. You, you Andre? All right, so far. And you, Chris? I don't pay with the lost car. All his drinking problems cost his cost his team to break break apart. That's true. His eyes didn't look right either half the time when he was on television. You notice that? Yeah. What the hell? Purple and red? Looks like he'd be doing drugs or something. I don't know. What's next, Mikey? A no disqualification, no count match between the Air Circles, Jake Hager, and the Demon God Chris Jericho versus the Bad Boy, Joey Janela, and the Concrete Rose, Sonny Kiss. Woo, what a lineup. It's a interesting to know that Chris Jericho and Jake Hager would team up and wreck these poor boys. uh, Sonny Kiss and the bad boy Joey Janela, but in the end, thanks to the Judas effect, it would take out if I'm correct, Joey Janela? No, it was Hager that finished Sonny with a hand and arm suplex and then scored the pin. Uh, And after that, Jericho said he and Hager had their eyes on FTR and the AW Tag Team titles. Sweet! We get to see them going up to the tag team titles instead of Pride and Powerful, which is interesting. Because you think they'd be backing them up. <laughs> I don't know. What about you, Chris? Jericho, tag team champion. Jericho is going to be the first AEW tag team champion with Hager. Like he was the first AEW heavyweight championship. Mm. You Andre? Yeah. Alright, so far I want to see Jericho get beat up for the tag titles. <laughs> yeah, but that would be a heel team versus a heel team. I don't think that will happen. <laughs> I'll have to wait. I don't know. I guess we don't have to uh, wait and see. You right on that. You right on that. Next up, we had MJF was at his campaign headquarters. He blamed them for his loss. He fired and everybody except except Wardle. Yeah, he stood up and MJ asked him if he had a problem with him and reminded him that Tony Khan doesn't sign his checks, but MJF signs him. And only then did Ward or Rutley say there were no problems. Mm. He just flexing his power. He mad. He mad. After what happened with John Mosley, mm. when yeah. Mosley took care of him, my thoughts is he was just he was just using his campaign staff to get what he wants when he tried to take the title off of John Mosley. But his plan backfired. Yeah, you know that girl was smiling. She's happy it doesn't have to deal with his BS. <laughs> you, Chris? Uh, MJF, uh, he, he's a loser, a crybaby. Because he couldn't get the job done last night. And he, and he blamed it to his campaign. What a, what a disgrace. Yep. You, Andre, how do you feel about MJF just blaming everybody but himself? Oh, I'm a little irritated with MJF. I mean, come on. He shouldn't be blaming people for his own actions and him just being a loser and losing, so forget <laughs> him. Yeah, that right. Mikey, takes the next one. Newly crowned AEW Tag Team Champions FTR Dash 
Hardwood, and Cass Wheeler were in the ring for a victory yeah, celebration with Tessa Blanchard's daddy, Tully Blanchard. Yep. He going around celebrating, putting a toast, saying that they are the best tag team, despite what all the other tag teams around the ring saying that they were the best and that everybody else was mediocre. It's especially Jurassic Express, Marco Stunt, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus enter the ring, and things would get out of hand. Hmm. How out of hand? Marco Stump dumped the cooler full of ice on the heads of FTR and Tully Blanchard. And next week, the next rant we're going to make will be Jurassic Express against FTR. Mm-hmm. So that was just a celebration with them. That was all it is. Next, we have Jet Taz joins the commentary team for the next match. Ah, it's Darby Allen's music's played, but instead of Darby Allen, it's once again the return of the absolute Ricky Starks cosplaying as Darby and making all sorts of promos in his name, knowing that how he was eliminated at All Out at the Casino Battle Royale. Once again, I say he was eliminated by being put in a body bag with thumbtacks inside and thrown over the rope while in the body bag. Ay, 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 ay. I don't want to be that person who opens up the body bag just to see what it looks like. Covered in thumbtacks and bleeding. Ooh. Poor fella. Haven't seen him all throughout that night, did we? Right, Ma Mikey? Did you see Darby that week? <laughs> no, I don't know why, because he described Darby being reckless and said he's going to recklessly open up a can of whoop ass the next time he sees him. Unbelievable. Ooh. You, Chris? Uh, yeah, we start to handle Darby Allen without the help of Brian Hayes. It will be a great match. You, Andre? All right, so far. All right, Mikey, take the next one. This was followed by number two ranked Nana Beast Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero versus Tay Conti. Excuse me! Firstly, reminder, T.F. Conti joined the Dark Order. So how does this work? Well, Conti charged Nyla, but Nyla halted her, running her into the turnbuckles. Conti followed up with martial arts style kicks and then brought Nyla to the mat with a knee bar. Nyla gunned Conti's pace, freeing herself, and then tossed Conti outside the ring. Vic Guerrero was waiting there and got in some cheap shots on Conti. And then Conti jumped off the top rope, trying for a sunset flip, but Nyla outpowered her. Nada picked her up and slammed her down to the mat. Conti surprised Nada with another arm bar, but Nada picked Conti after a vicious beast bomb. And after that, Nada wasn't done yet. She decided to open up a can of whoop ass on Conti, but the AEW Women's Champion, Hiku Shida, came out with a big old candlestick. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, Chris. T-Money said they weren't doing the rank system no more yet. They said that Nyla Rose is ranked number two. Who's number one? Do you know, Chris? It's got to be Mosley, I think. No, in the women's division. Uh, it's, well, it's got to be, it's gotta be Hiku Shida. True. It will be the case, wouldn't it? What do you think, Mikey? I mean, uh, Chris? Uh, well, that was Peter Conti. Uh, she was, she was trying to make a, another statement. But, uh, she just came up with a candle stick. Make sure she don't enter. Uh, 
You want it, Dre? All right, so far. Next was an interview with Kenny Omega and Jim Ross. Jim before Ross. Before that, it was announced that after that, actually before that, it was announced that after the bus, unsportsmanlike super kid party that Alice Marvel earlier tonight, Tony Khan has fined Matt and Nick Jackson five grand each. That's ten thousand dollars. Holy hoo hoo! They could be looking for another job, unemployment. Not with the money they've been making worldwide. You know that, right? Ring of Honor, New Japan. Etc. What'd you say, Chris? I said all the wrestling promotion. Ah. They went all over. Indeed. So, after that, it would be Kenny Omega's interview, in which case... He said that both he and Hangman have chemistry. So, Jim Ross says, what's next? He, they had a good tag team division, but they were, got to the level where we, they got. And you learned so much about Hangman that he didn't like. Got his own plans and goals, and he thinks that it's time to go back to singles actions. That's what Kenny Omega wow. says. So, first off, Andre, how do you feel about Kenny Omega going back into singles competitors? Um, I, I would rather see him in singles competition. I mean, he did okay as a tag team. But, yeah, I want to see how good he do uh, as a singles competitor again, you know? One wing angel, the sweeper. Yeah, Kenny. Oh, mega! Ow! Bang! As he goes. Good night. Chances are he's going to return as a heel then, because he works better as a heel. I gotta say, he works better as a heel. As a bullet club member. True on that. Your thoughts on that, Chris? Kenny Omega go back to a singles competition, and he will be focusing on the AEW World Champion as the cleaner, Kenny Omega. You, Mikey? Looks like Hangman Page is heading back to singles action. Excuse me. Uh, Excuse What's the next one? On October 14th. October 14th. October 14th, the anniversary of Dynamite. <laughs> one year, if I'm not mistaken. It will be AEW World Champion John Mossy defending against the Murhawk Monster Lance Archer. So it's already been one year since AEW's been around, huh? Yeah, it's one get, year. It's getting close. It's not next week, but it's getting there. October 8th, 14th. 14th. That's halfway through October. With that said, let's go ahead and... Wait, what was it? Time for the main event. The, yep. The, the, the final match before AEW came to an end. The Assaulted One, the TNT Champ, Miss Roy Lee, the Lee of the Dark Order, to defend his town against the natural <laughs> Dustin Rose. I remember this. Dustin Rhodes. Cody. Mm -hmm. Dustin Rhodes put up one hell of a fight, but sadly, after a long match, Brody Lee ended up getting the one up on Dustin Rhodes, despite his valiant efforts of owning the match throughout the whole time. It was Brody Lee who laid the hard hitting hits that put him out and ultimately got the win and retaining his championship. After which, all of the members of the uh, uh, Dark Order came out, and even low, one of them low blowed Justin Rhodes. That was wrong. And uh, Cole Cabana was trying to congratulate uh, Brody Lee, but he's still mad at him for costing him at all out. It is like, yeah, yeah. And Uno Umo is 
cons uh, con consoling him once again. Like, that's there, 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 there. So what are your thoughts on that, Mikey? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, they slugged out, but Dustin put an SPC at the end, at the sense of the Lariat, and then when Brody came with two thirst kiss, and then the discuss Lariat to pin Dustin, and after that, the rest of the Dark Lord joined Mr. Brody Lee to celebrate in the ring, carried a fallen QT marks on the shoulders, and dropped him at the feet of the Zulted One. Mr. Brody yelled at Coke and told him yeah. to leave the ring. Mm -mm -mm. So they got the natural nightmares right there laid out. Where's Brandy and uh, Allie? I have no idea. I know Brandy was uh, being choked when her husband was being carried off in a stretcher and then brutally assaulted <laughs> again after the stretcher, as well as Arn Anderson. So we haven't seen those three specifically in quite some time, as well as Allie, week in four. This is bad day for the Nightmare family. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, Andre? All right, so far. How do you, how do you feel knowing Brody Lee uh, got the one up on Justin Rhodes? Ah, oh, that's messed up. Forget Brody Lee, that Trump. I hope Justin Rhodes gets his payback on him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You, Chris? Yeah. I was for I was fully for Dustin, for Dustin Rhodes to win the TNT Championship. He was one of your favorites. Yeah. I remember you were kicking my ass in the uh, wrestling games. I was like, of all the people you had to choose, you had to choose Goldust, and you were whooping my ass with him. I was like, hey, what the hell? <laughs> so go ahead, continue. But he got cheated by the one of the Dark Order members. And then Gordon Lee is still the champion. Who is that? That's some good music right there. <laughs> All right. Watching South Park and they played Lord. Oh. You know the episode where uh, Randy Marsh actually has uh, like he's Lucky's Lord. Nice. Was there anything else we missed? No, that should be it. That was it. Thirty-two minutes. Actually, thirty-three now. Well, let's just wrap it up. Yeah. A shout out to our fellow brethren of the Heaven's Monsters podcast. A shout out to Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube channels will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And I, I you know what? I actually talked about this because, uh, <laughs> Andre, you haven't uploaded any new videos courtesy of the fact of the quarantine, right? Well, I wish you could come over and we could do the podcast, huh? Oh, come on, Sergio. Nobody, man. I, I'm saying you wish. <laughs> it ain't happening anytime soon until this stuff goes away. And I already know Mikey's yeah. already saying it. Go ahead, Mikey. Like I said, I'm sick and tired of this stupid COVID-19. Me too. Me three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me four. Cuatro. So, let's go ahead and end this. Y'all ready? Oh, uh, uh, almost this. forgot. Almost forgot. I did the three. I need to do the other five. A shout out to Chris Petrie, T Money, Renee Farrell, and Delvin, of course. Okay, now let me get this camera, flip it around, and say goodbye. So, first up, there we go. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button. You like the content? Hit that notification bell for the next. Heaven's Monsters podcast. It's a sad day. Today, today TikTok is banned. Ah! September 20th. So, what, so nobody can use TikTok at all? From what they're saying on the news, it's going to be no longer, it's going to be still available, but there's no going to be any updates. So I don't know how that works. The way I'm thinking is that when you try to access the app, it will say, due to location, you are not allowed to use this uh, app. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. 
But it, that's what they're telling us on the news, saying that we'll be still able to use the app, just won't get updates. Oh, that's something. Huh? I don't know. Maybe I can still upload some stuff. I don't know. I'll find out. I'll let you know. I wonder how this is going to work. <laughs> yeah. Good question. My question is, either it stays banned forever, or the people demand it to be unbanned, the ban to be lifted. So, how long yeah. that will take, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And with that said, everybody, that's it for the show. I'm Serge, and this is Andre, this is Chris Petrie, and this is Mikey. And that's the Bob line, because the Heaven's Bosses podcast we says so, and we'll see you tomorrow, because it's late, early Sunday morning, but we'll see you later tonight for part two of AEW September 16th. Yep. Bye, everybody. Good night, good morning, who knows what. <laughs>